Just kidding. Yesterday, I watched Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson try out Kylie skin, and a few people have asked me to review it, and I thought it was really weird because I actually do. I do K-Beauty. I thought it'd be fun to make a video kind of doing a review on Kylie's skin from a K-Beauty YouTuber's perspective. But I thought, am I gonna spend $125 to review something I'm probably not gonna like? I'm gonna probably end up using that walnut scrub on my body. On my makeups. Now, I'm a big fan of Shane Dawson, but one thing that I always, um, Notice was like how red his skin is, but more like relatable because that's me, especially lately. My skin used to not be like this, but as I've gotten older, I've gotten a lot more sensitive. Watching him try the Kylie skin really was like, as like a skincare sort of perk. I mean, I do mostly makeup, but I'm very into skincare. And watching him was just kind of like, <laughs> And not that he's gonna watch this, but hopefully for those of you that kind of have skin that might be like Shane's and or mine, hopefully this will help you. I'm not sure about Shane Dawson's skincare routine, and I know he was just using the, the Kylie skin products for the video. There are a few things in there I don't feel like he needed to use as a person with, I'm assuming, I'm gonna assume, I don't like assuming, but we're gonna assume this video. He, he seems like he has like, kind of red, like sensitive skin with rosacea. When it comes to skin like that, you really need to focus on um, moisture. I think with any skin type you have, I think you need to focus on moisture, but specifically sensitive, dry skin. I like the concept of makeup wipes, but because they're convenient, but I just feel like they don't have enough product in the actual wipe to remove, like if you're like putting on all this makeup and you try to remove but, like this little tissue paper that has like a little spritz of like makeup remover, I don't, mm, and this might be a little bit extra, but I tend to remove my skin makeup and my eye and lip makeup with two separate products. For my eyebrows, my eyes, and my lips, I use a cleansing water. I usually use eye and lip makeup remover, but I just been using this because there is a pump and that's convenient. Also, an important thing, those round cotton pads that Jeffrey and Shane were using, again, I'm not trying to, I feel like those types of cotton rounds really soak up a lot of product. So when you're wiping or using them, they tend to dry out before you can even, you know, wipe your whole face. These are from Japan, but if you can find them or like in general, cotton sheets like this, like this, really thin ones, it kind of gives the product more mileage. And because it holds the product without drying out, it actually keeps the product in here so that you can set it on your eyes and your eyebrows and your lips so that you kind of can just wipe. I don't have anything on my lips right now, but if I did, I would have wiped it off with this. Now you can actually just use that all over your face, but this is where I would use a cleansing oil. This is what we call double cleansing. Oh, shit where you kind of cleanse with an oil and then you cleanse with like a water-based cleanser. This is what I mean by you kind of need product to move the product around on your face. Cleansing with wipes and then cleansing with a foam cleanser. Especially with the type of foam cleanser that the Kylie skin is, it seems kind of gentle for cleansing, so I don't think it's gonna actually remove especially heavy makeup. You have to spend too long with this, kind of just lift the foundation off the skin and then rinse off. And when you're rinsing, you need to make sure you use water that's obviously not too hot, not too cold, kind of like skin temp, like room temperature water. And make sure you're like really cleansing it because sometimes you get you kind of rushed through this step and you kind of don't actually rinse off everything. You'd be surprised at how clean your skin will really feel if you properly, you know, remove the water. If you feel like the water is not enough, you can use one of these smooth cleansing sponges that I kind of just use to wipe off or dry the skin. And it's not like a towel where I feel like you can tear at the skin. I actually put, probably shouldn't be doing this because my skin is sensitive and it's just people like Shane that have that really raw red skin. They don't actually do this. If, they, if you have something like this, kind of just use it to dry the skin. Now actually, if you really work the oil cleanser really well into your skin and you rinse it all off, I actually sometimes, a lot of times, I just stop there because um, sometimes using even really gentle cleansers can kind of exasperate the sensitive red skin even more. And also that oil specifically comes off really easily with water, so I don't feel like, you know, I don't feel like there's oil left on my skin. So there's people that use olive oil to cleanse their skin. I don't know how you could do it. I try not to use foam cleansers because um, a lot of them can be kind of harsh. I think that goes without saying. The one that I do use, um, and don't mind using as the Etude House pH 6.5 Whip Cleanser because apparently it's really, really mild. This is like the static fill of foam cleansers in K-Beauty. Apparently there's ingredients in it that's supposed to duplicate the natural 
shit in your skin. But if you really, really have to use a foam cleanser before you let it touch your face, I recommend completely foaming it up in your hands first. Whether it be a foam cleanser like that, or if it's like a foam cleanser like this, where it comes out like a cream first. Foam it on your hands first and then massage your face. Or there's a sort of like new generation of cleansers that are like jelly, uh, which are really good because they don't foam, but they cleanse your skin. You do, if you're wearing makeup, you do have to take the makeup off first because they're so, so gentle that I don't really feel like they erase makeup, even if they say that they do, like this one. Both of these I really like. The Crave um, Matcha Hydrating Cleanser. It doesn't really foam. It kind of just gets slightly bubbly, but not even... Yeah, she doesn't foam. The Glow Recipe Blueberry Bounce Gentle Cleanser kind of is the same thing. This one foams a little bit though, slightly, but it's not like that rich, luxurious lather. Since they use the Kylie Foam Cleanser, let's use the Esther House one. I think it's obvious that you shouldn't use water that's too hot or too cold, but it's especially important for people with really red sensitive skin because if you work really hard at recovering your sensitive skin, you can kind of basically go back to square one. If you use hot water, you kind of like ruin it. Hot water can really fuck up the skin. So here's my thing. They were using that like the Kylie toner and I feel like those the sort of like Western mindset of toners that it's supposed to, you use it like on a little cotton pad and you like wipe your skin to remove all the you know excess makeup. But, I think if you're wiping your face with a toner on a cotton pad and there's still makeup on your face, your cleansers weren't really doing their job. The cleansing stage is where you're supposed to remove everything and then skincare follows. If you're that bougie bitch that has a mist, then I feel like this is the right time to use it. At night, I really like to use the Carinology Reblue Balancing Creaminess. I got this from that BTS clinic and I still really, really like it. I almost have used all of it. And this has lasted me a few months. At this stage is where you want to use a mist. I wouldn't use it as like my main source of moisture, but it's like a good start, especially when you just finished cleansing because your skin can start to dry up again really quickly. Now, the, the sort of Asian way of thinking of toner is, um, it's kind of like the moisturizing stage. It's more of like a, it's like a really watery consistency that you use for uh, moisture. None of that stuff with alcohol because what I actually do with this is I layer it. Um, you can kind of think of your skin as like a sponge. You know, when you go to wash your dishes and you're, you haven't, maybe you haven't used a sponge in like a day or two, and it's like really hard and crusty, but when you try to put it under water, it doesn't immediately absorb the water. You kind of have to hold it under the water to let it soak in the water. Skin can kind of be like that. If you have like really dry skin, especially your sensitive skin, when you put moisturizer on, if you put a lot, a few minutes later, feel, your skin feels super dry again. Your skin is probably dehydrated. And I feel like with sensitive skin, moisture is really, really important. And I think using a toner, um, like a moisturizing toner is a really good step for that. Um, I use this for a long time. I feel like for me because I review so much skincare or try so much different skincare. The Naked Face Stress Zero Toner, which is good because it's also um, calming, balancing for smooth, refreshed skin, suitable for all ages. Now there's this trend in Korea, like, I don't know, two or so summers ago. Oh, by the way, you don't need that much. You only need like, you can't see that. Per layer, and I said layer because we're gonna Put this on a few times. You want it to absorb really quickly. And the less you use, the better. There's that trend like so years ago called seven skin, which is basically you put toner on, moisturizing toner like this seven times. And it sounds ridiculous, but I, I, it was like a trend, but it's one of those trends I feel like is actually really beneficial. And I still do it to this day because it really helps my skin because I thought I was oily. So I would always be using all this skincare makeup that would mattify my skin. But later on I realized that I'm actually really dehydrated which is like where the inside of the skin is dry. You can slap on all the moisturizer you want, but it's kind of just moisturizing the outside of the skin. If you think this might take too long, then you can actually also put this in a mist bottle and spray it in your hand. And that kind of helps it go by a little bit faster. Put it on your lips too. Um, I'm that bitch that like licks my lips and bites my lips and it gets like big wrinkly ass anal looking lips throughout the day. So if you're like me, you kind of forget to drink water sometimes then um, it helps a little bit. Now I know Shane tries like uh, 
really expensive skincare as well, like Tatcha. I don't know. And this is actually the stage where I would be using things like a uh, serum, all of the kind of like active ingredient sort of skincare. Also, real quick note, the order that you kind of do your skincare, like after cleansing, right? Then you have like all the skincare you're gonna put on top. Without getting too scientific -y, basically from the lightest to the heaviest. So the lightest, you start with like everyday water toning, then you wanna use like the slightly more viscous serums, vitamin C, whatever's. Also eye cream, I, I think I will tend to use really early because if you put all this stuff and then eye cream last, the eye cream has to like work to get to your to your skin here. I love me some retinols and like exfoliating sort of things, um, brightening skincare and all that. But with my skin being in such a sensitive state, especially lately where I'm trying all this makeup and for people like Shane, that have extremely like raw kind of looking skin, I think now would be a good time to use skincare more for like recovery. So the Great Barrier Relief from Crave Beauty, the IOPA Stem 3 Ampule, the Accent Recovery. This costs an arm and a leg, but she works. I think a good basic one to start off with is the, the Crave one. I don't know, I don't feel like I'm very good at describing skincare, but basically it's got ingredients in here that uh, help. You see like right here, you see that around my nose, right here on my chin between my brows, the really thin, raw, sensitive skin. It basically helps to kind of heal that. Now kind of just like leave it at that. You can go in and use all your other specialized skincare, but this is where I kind of like start ending everything with like moisturizer and like masks. Um, oh, by the way, masks. I kind of think of masks, sheet masks as like serums. I used to use them almost as moisturizers, but I realized they don't feel like it because they're really just thin, serum-y essences that are packed into a sheet mask. So sheet masks I will use after my toner. That way, especially since my skin is um, plump after the toner, it can absorb everything else easily. And so that would be a good time to use a sheet mask. I think Shane said he didn't really like Kylie skin moisture because it was quite thick it almost like a body he called it an arm and leg lotion i have oily skin oily dehydrated but i don't mind slapping on a lot of moisture but if you're into really just light stuff the glow recipe watermelon glow pink juice moisturizer is a really cute one you really only need that much and trust me if you follow this not that you have to but if you did with like the toner and stuff you would be surprised especially if you have dry skin at just like the toner and even just using a light moisture because dry people with dry skin will tend to gravitate towards really heavy creams. You'll be uh, kind of surprised at the difference that hydrating the inside and the outside of your skin helps with just using just moisturize kind of just, again, kind of only moisturize the outside. Now my skin is shit because of all the acne I used to have and all the scarring it left. But hopefully you can focus more on like the glow of the moisture. And the good thing about this is that it's not just like a temporary sort of glow that you get from the, the moisture still sitting on your skin and you're waiting for it to absorb. The more you train your skin to like keep moisture in, the more it will glow like the glass skin or whatever that the kids enjoy. It will retain and kind of keep. A lot of people will think like, oh my god, like Asian Koreans and like their smooth water, like whatever, mulguang, like glass skin. A lot of times it's because their skin is just smooth anyway. Like the fact that it's just a really smooth surface and keeping up with that moisture will help give you that glow. So you don't have to use like makeup to get glow. Just your skincare, you can rely on that. And really, you can just end there, but uh, at night for days where I was wearing makeup that might have irritated my skin, uh, I like to use a sleeping mask that's uh, on it, oh, sleeping mask. It's just a really heavy cream, to be honest, that has like special ingredients. The Laneige Chica Sleeping Mask, I think it's kind of new. I don't really know if it's doing anything, but I feel like my skin, I wake up with a glow in the morning. I think it more is like sealing everything in. I don't have to put it like everywhere, but then I gotta bring it all over anyway. <laughs> also, patting the skin. I think it's way more effective than rubbing skincare in. I think the only rubbing is when you're cleansing. It seems really aggressive, but it's actually less irritating to my skin than rubbing. Because I'm a bad bitch. When I'm working at my desk, I always have like a mist sitting next to me. So when I can feel my confidence slowly running down the drain, I miss myself. Hoping that I'll feel a little bit better. Now my skin is not the best, but I learned a few things throughout my journey. So hopefully that helped some of you guys. Shane Dawson, if you're watching this, you're probably not fucking watching this. One, good luck on your skin journey, and two, I'm waiting for that next docu-series. So bye sisters.